factory by its founder, David Lee Wilson. I've been running Anglesey Sea Salt, or Hallam Mon, as it's known, for over 25 years now. I started as a fishmonger, then started a public aquarium next door, and then out of that came the sea salt. I suppose I've got a bit of a problem that I don't like throwing things away. And even when I've hired a skip, I find myself taking stuff out of it because it might be useful. And I've been sitting on stuff in sheds behind the sea salt and I keep putting things in and I don't often take things out. So this is a rare opportunity to, to go into my secret sheds. Hello, morning. Hello. How are you doing? Welcome to Hallen Mon, Chrysler. Yeah, thank you very much for having us. Come in. Behind the scenes is the first shed where I made sea salt and many other sheds, and I'm a bit of a hoarder. I want to see that. I'm honest. <laughs> yes. Right, Please. let's go and see what we can find. Right, do you want to come into the milking parlour? Yep. So this is where I store things that I either like, love, or finished with. OK. It does look a little bit like you've been burgled. <laughs> what are those fridge chairs there, Drew? You what, sorry? You don't see them fridge chairs very often, do you? That's a nursing <laughs> chair. <laughs> you don't throw anything away? I'm not very good at throwing things away. I've got okay. six chairs that I couldn't make as a woodworker. No. They're too skilled. Yeah. Do they appeal to you? No. What do you call that kind of chair? Well, I need to unsaleable. <laughs> <laughs> we are now in some of the outbuildings, the barns. This is, we always end up here. It's just how it is, and I'm never going to complain. I'm never going to complain because the things you find in these places can be remarkable. How about...? I do like these. How many of these have you got? I've only got that one. They just make great door stops, don't they? They do. It's been a door stop at the Sea Salt for some time. Ah, OK. Um, what was it originally? They're for hanging off the side of boats. It's the same oh, as so a boy. Oh, so it was a fender? Yeah, like, that's a okay. fender, so they don't bang against the door. Right. That's what it's for. But it would have taken somebody hours to knock that. Yeah. I mean, or days. Yeah, but they had the time. The, the rope fender... Um, is just a good piece of... Well, in, in some ways, it's a little bit of folk art, isn't it? But it's also extremely attractive to the eye. So if you've got a nice country house and you want a doorstop and you live by the sea, wallop, that will do you. Made of coiled and knotted rope, fenders like this were handmade by boatmen. Each one would have been subtly different depending on the type of rope used and have taken hours to make. Around 100 years old, this fender is made of coir and could be worth around £150. What do you want for the fender? Um, what are you offering for the fender? I don't know, I've never bought I mean, one. In, every, in any haggle, everyone wants to get the first price in. Right, 50, you want to 50 know quid. And I, 50 quid? Yeah. If you're talking 150, we're, we're in business. Right, OK. We'd, 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 the maximum I'll go to is 75, so we're only going to get to half of what you want and more than I want to spend. So it's about the perfect deal. Drew Pritchard is visiting the sheds out the back of a salt factory on Anglesey, not far from his Conry base. You don't throw anything away. I'm not very good at throwing things away. It does look a little bit like you've been burgled. <laughs> <laughs> and so far, the only thing he spotted that he'd like to buy is an old knotted boat fender. If you're talking 150, we're, we're in business. Right, OK. We'd, 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 the maximum I'll go to is 75, so we're only going to get to half of what you want yeah. and more than I want to spend. So it's about the perfect deal. Well, you've got to find your day is worth something. Yeah. And it is Call damaged. Call it 80 and we're done. Well, I'm not arguing, going to argue over a fiver, so yes, we'll take it. OK. David's no fool. He wants all the money for everything. It's the sort of thing I'd want to pay 20 quid for, end up paying... I think, was it 80 pounds I think I paid for it? I mean, it's madness. But it's a first buy. We're here. Let's just get some money changing hands and see what happens. Right, come into this old shed. OK. Thank you. Right, and behind this big old door <laughs> is a bread and cheese cupboard in the corner. Right. Barakaus. Cupboard Barakaus. These are one of the easiest things, right, in the antiques world to identify. Are they? Yeah, yeah, because they, a, were, they as just... As opposed to this, which is one of the hardest. Well, it's a pig bench. 
Damn. <laughs> I thought I was going to Come on. show Drew something. It's, it's my and this job. hole was for holding the head, presumably, when it was G bristle. I should imagine so, yeah. Well, it's, that's it, my it's, understanding. It's, uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. No, you've got to go a bit further than that to fool me, I'm afraid. OK. It's, uh... <laughs> right, I can't teach an antique school or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so that one there, these are great little things. Right, so these were only made in that sort of style in four counties. So you've got Anglesey, uh, Denbyshire, Carnarvonshire, Mary Onithshire. Generally oak with pine into the sides there. Um, they're dated, so it's the last vestiges of the Regency period, but they've got nothing to do with the Regency style, so about 1820. Um, oak front, quite nice. So today, we're looking at the moment, we're not looking at being able to buy it much. I mean, this happens. You might do 10 house calls before you buy one thing. You know, they're not all, you know, the gold rush. But then, there is something I immediately recognise and expect to find in North Wales, because it's a cupboard barrack house, so it's a bread and cheese cupboard. It is very particular to North Wales. This one has got paint still on the sides, which is also rarely seen, but correct. Bracket feet, um, very simplistic, but has a real charm to it. The characteristic grill in the upper doors of this traditional North Wales bread and cheese cupboard allowed airflow for food storage. Around 200 years old, its construction and style indicate it was almost certainly made by the Williams family of Tallern, Anglesey. It could be worth around £2,000. It's not bad at all. Where did you get it from? I got it from a local farmer, so it's probably made on Anglesey. Yeah, that would be about right. So, it's worth... 2,000 quid in perfect condition, I can give you one price for it, it would be £1,500. So it gives me a margin after some work mm -hmm. and tax. That's where I'm at with it. Okay. So I don't know how long you've had it, but I don't know, you might be... I've you probably had it 20 years. So you're doing all right? No, I don't think so. No? No. Oh. Well, um, there's a premium for love and patina and quality. Do you know how much that's I worth? Think... <laughs> and the story no. you will tell Nothing. of it's had children's games in for the last... Zero. Time. Nothing. Nothing. I think if you were approaching 1800, we'd be back. It's not worth me doing. There's no money in it. There's, there's, there's no probably money in some. It. There's, there's nothing. Some. There's nothing. There's, I, I think 1750 or whatever. If it was 30, 40 years older, then we'd be in a different mm. league, but we're not. Mm. Um, 1750 sold. We'll take it. That's fine. Okay, I can live with that. Thank you. It does have that wonderful time worn patina to the entire thing. It's never been touched. A lot of antique dealers still today get things like that. They'll sand them down, polish them to death, set all handles off, get the old brasso out, polish them to death as well, put it back up and go, look at that, isn't it beautiful? No, it's not. You've ruined it. You're a fool. Look what you've done. And it's nice to find one that's had nothing really done to it. Before they leave, the boys are keen to have a look around the salt factory and learn about a process that dates back at least 2,000 years. Before we actually go in, we've got to make sure no hair ends up in the salt. OK. So, hairnet, overshoe, beer snoods. Three right. things, and then we put Do on I a coat. Do I need a hairnet? I'll be on the safe side. Really? Let's just give you a big beard snood. <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK, you will need a coat. Right, OK. Thank you. Oh, I do like I do like one of these. It feels like you've got a job. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like you feel like we've got a proper job. Have you ever had tea in a hairnet and beard snood before? Uh, only at the weekends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right then, I'm feeling salty. Let's do it. Right, come into the heart of my sea salt operation. Right, so this is where the magic happens. Wow, it's where? hot in here. Naturally filtered seawater is first boiled in a vacuum and then the brine is released into these shallow crystallisation tanks until the sea salt crystals form, ready for harvesting. How long does it take to get from that to that? Well, from, it's 24 hours from that, and we've harvested once early this morning. OK. And you can see the salt crystals just beginning to form on the surface. So, obviously, this is seawater? Yep, this is concentrated seawater. From, from the sea From there. Yep, so we pay the Queen for this seawater, the Crown Estates, yeah. and we pipe it, evaporate it, and it goes into this very sterile environment, which is why you're wearing this attractive beer stewed, because <laughs> you don't want to find a hair in the no, salt you wherever no. you're buying it. They've been taking salt 
out of the Menai Straits since Roman periods and probably before. They're keeping up that tradition, they're doing a beautiful job of it. The salt is exported around the world. So we have a very prestigious Welsh company here which we're all very proud of. So a good day, didn't have to go very far, seen a new process, bought a couple of things. Not every day is gravy, you know, not every day you're winning the lottery, you're really not. You have to do the hard yards and buy where you can and take your profits wherever they are. But a good day nonetheless. I suppose the most interesting thing for me is the value people place on things. So there's stuff there that I've got emotional value with and Drew probably doesn't share that emotional value. So we couldn't agree on a lot of things. And probably that's why I've got a shed full of junk. <laughs> so we went to Anglesey, to a salt factory, and bought a piece of Welsh common vernacular furniture. It might be the first time it's ever been off the island. Wow, has he got his passport? Yeah, no, it's great. Really, really good. Just need to find some bread and cheese now. Yeah, should we stop and get some on the way yes, back? Yes, please. A few days later, and with her curiosity piqued by the boat fender Drew bought at Hallen Morn, Rebecca has traveled to the heart of Britain's canal network in Northamptonshire to find out more. I'd like to know the history of fenders and how you actually make them. Pete's Flockhart has been hand-making rope fenders for 30 years. This is wonderful. And the smell of rope is just like knockout. Yeah, I mean, fenders have been made in this building. It's an old uh, forge, an old blacksmith's forge, and yeah. they've been made in here for 70 years or so. Can I show you yeah, our but... fender, which Drew bought in yeah. Anglesey? Ah, OK. Well, I'm not surprised it was somewhere like Anglesey, because it, it's made of coir uh, fibre, which is used more in salt water than you would see round here. This one will almost certainly have been made abroad in tropical countries where... Were where, they? Yeah, right. where coir and coconut were their ready usable fibres to use. They used coir yep. because it's really good at sort of... It'll take the water on and it'll repel the water out, so without rotting as badly as some other natural fibres, yeah. So what's actually inside there? Well, inside there, believe it or not, the, it will have started from an eye like this. An eye would have been formed in the rope that had been a knot tied in the middle, mm. and it would have been wrapped to make a ball shape and then covered over with this jacket of, oh. of hitching. Right, this is a jacket? Yes. I can show you the method. Basically, it's a different shape fender, but the jacket covering on this is, is the same. This, the principle's the same. So the, the way that that fender would be made, I use a, a spike. So you're sort of knitting a jacket. Correct. Around your coiled center. So how long would it take you to do a ball fender from scratch? From scratch. I think I would probably hitch one of those over in three or four hours. Okay. It would be a passed down skill, like fishermen would have made their own, but you would probably have one particular fisherman that would be well known for doing it in a particular area. You're a rarity now. I mean, these traditional skills are just... Getting lost, aren't they? They're getting they? lost, but... You know, just yeah. meeting you is fantastic. So, That's really nice of you to say yeah. something.
So this is where I store things that I either like, love, or finished with. OK. It does look a little bit like you've been burgled. <laughs> what are those Got fridge that. chairs there, Drew? You what, sorry? You don't see them fridge chairs very often, do you? That's a nursing <laughs> chair. <laughs> you don't throw anything away? I'm not very good at throwing things away. I've got okay. six chairs that I couldn't make as a woodworker. No. They're too skilled. Yeah. Do they appeal to you? No. What do you call that kind of chair? Well, I need to unsaleable. <laughs> <laughs> we are now in some of the outbuildings, the barns. This is... We always end up here. It's just how it is, and I'm never going to complain. I'm never going to complain because the things you find in these places can be remarkable. How about...? <laughs> I do like these. How many of these have you got? I've only got that one. They just make great doorstops, don't they? They do. It's been a doorstop at the Sea Salt for some time. Ah, OK. Um, what was it originally? They're for hanging off the side of boats. It's the same oh, as so a boy. Oh, so it's a fender. Yeah, like, that's a okay. fender, so they don't bang against the door. Right. That's what it's for. But it would have taken somebody hours to knock that. Yeah. I mean, or days. Yeah, but they had the time. The, the rope fender um, is just a good piece of... Well, in, in some ways, it's a little bit of folk art, isn't it? But it's also extremely attractive to the eye. So if you've got a nice country house and you want a doorstop and you live by the sea, wallop, that will do you. Made of coiled and knotted rope, fenders like this were handmade by boatmen. Each one would have been subtly different, depending on the type of rope used, and have taken hours to make. Around 100 years old, this fender is made of coir and could be worth around £150. What do you want for the fender? Um, what are you offering for the fender? I don't know, I've never bought I mean, one. In, every, in any haggle, everyone wants to get the first price in. Right, 50, you want to know 50 mine, quid. And I, 50 quid? Yeah. If you're talking 150, we're, we're in business. Right, OK. We'd, 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 the maximum I'll go to is 75, so we're only going to get to half of what you want yeah. and more than I want.